Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, I want to thank everyone of you for joining us this hour. I know some of you are in the evening. Some of us are here in the morning. Some of us are in very, very early in the morning. What is the wonder word of God? The word we are. Those of us in Nigeria and in England, we are in their evening time. Those of us in California, we are in our very, very early morning time. Those of us in Texas here, we are in morning time, but much later than those in California. And those, of, those in, in uh, Washington and New York, they are already late in the morning. What wonder power of God. I want to thank all of you for taking your wonderful time to come and join us. It is good for brethren to be together in the hour with the Lord. Some 2,000 years ago, somebody asked me, why do you say an hour with the Lord? I said, the Bible is our standard. Some 2,000 years ago, in the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus Christ established an hour with the Lord. He told his disciples, why don't you spend an hour with me? Just spend one hour with me. That's what he requested. He said, but the Spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. May our spirit be strong today, and may our flesh be strong also, so that we can hear the word of God. Jesus, the bishop is with us on the line. Brother King from England is here, and Sister Ruchi is here, and Brother Martin, Brother Shion, Brother Brian, so many of us here. It's a Lucy and all the rest of other people. We are so many of us here today. It's a rose. Love. And some of other brethren have traveled, and uh, some are in Nigeria due to one thing and the other, and some are in other places of the country. That people have a union, they call me this one, I say, Pastor, I'm not able to attend. I say, Well, remember, don't let God's, don't let God's coin be lost. So, you know, God's coin, the little boy was giving money by the mother, I said, Son, go to Sunday school. The guy, the two quarter, the guy was so excited. He was just jumping, playing, he was happy. He said, One quarter is for you. One God is for God. The guy was so happy. As he was playing, the quarter got fell from his hand. He went to the quarter. And they look at it too far. I cannot pick it. He said, God, that is your quarter. <laughs> he said, God, as you all know, you all just went to the quarter. So the guy came out from Sunday school. The mother said, I was just saying, what's good? You didn't give your offering. He said, No, mom, I didn't give my offering. He said, Why not? He said, The one that God's for fall is to the quarter. The one that said, actually it was God, said, God, you told me before, the one you gave to me the first time was God's word. That was the one that told me to do God. <laughs> that was what we do. We say, oh, God, today is a busy day. Do you want, today is a busy day. Your time is not at half time for you today. So your money has fallen to the God. Don't let God's money fall into the God. <laughs> Don't let God's money fall into the God. If you fall into the God, it has to be your own money. <laughs> May God help us in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, as a pastor, we have to write a telephony story to wake us up. Mm -hmm. People say, you're yeah, very funny. I say, I'm a pastor. I have to tell funny stories. <laughs> so let us pray. Let us at least have a prayer for us, our beautiful mama. Is <laughs> Alisa, go ahead and pray for us. Father, in the name of Jesus, we honor your holy name for another day, a brand new day, a day untouched by human hands. A day, O oh God, of miracle, a day, a day of your love to express to us. And we slept in life and we woke up this morning here at Alice Jane. What a wonderful God you are. Yes, Lord. Yes. What a God you are. What a great God you are. Father, we thank you for this hour. Lord, with the Lord, O oh God, we have come before your presence in humility. We bow before your children, Lord, Yes, Lord. Father, we are free to remain with you, Father, Lord, you know, as you listen to us, Father, we thank you because your word says, you say, when we are here speaking, it says you have heard us and you have answered us. Yes. God, of me, as your word is being taught to us this morning, Father, Lord, we pray, Lord, that you give us, O oh God, the grace to understand by the Spirit of God. Yes, Lord. We pray, Lord, that we are able to be able to hear us, but we shall be to us of your word. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, help us, O God, Amen. and be in the light of your word we are going to hear today in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. We are going to use this morning, we pray, that you feel him, O God, that we have no word of your own. Yes, Lord. We are directed by the Holy Spirit of God. 
to minister to us in the name of Jesus. Amen. God, we, do, we appreciate you for being so good. Thank you for everyone that has connected this morning. Yes, Father, we decree this morning that our life shall never be the same anymore because your word is here to transform us. Your word is here to lead us. The world is here to guide and protect us. The world is here to keep us safe in this dark world. Blessed be your holy name, Father. We give you all the glory and all honor. All the and majesty, Lord, we are standing with your holy name this morning. For in Jesus' name we are praying. Amen. Thank you very much, God uh, bless you. We are going to be reading Matthew chapter 23. As our, as our custom, we take the Bible verse by verse, chapter by chapter. To understand the mind of God. People say, Why do you do that from Pastor Sayo? Because I don't want somebody to say, God, I didn't know it was in the Bible. If you say it wasn't, they will say, No. I sent my servant, Pastor Marshall. I used to go to the nursing home. I was going there to preach. We used to go to two, 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 two nursing homes in a week. And then uh, on Sunday. And uh, then uh, Mama Rachel said, My son, I want to really thank you. When I get to heaven, I'm going to tell Jesus Christ, You're a good man. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to tell Jesus you're a good man. I say, Mama, Jesus Christ sent me here. When you get there, Jesus Christ goes, it's my servant. That was what I sent him there. I say, Jesus Christ already know. He said, no, but I'm still going to tell Jesus about you. So we're going to go to heaven one day. And uh, after we were preaching, he told me, he said, he said, next Sunday, you may not see me. I say, what? Well, he said, I'll be going home. He said, I'll be going home. I say, what do you mean? He said, I'll be going home. I think it's time for me to go home. So when I came, they said she died on Friday. Oh my God. So the woman actually died. And, then, and then when I came, they were telling me, oh, Pastor, we were trying to get you to come for the funeral area. I said, that's okay. Mama, go right now, I'm here, and I am not here for the dead and for the living. Mama is going home to rest. Just like I know you are here today. Yes. Get your Bible and read it. And uh, we are starting from March chapter 23. 1 to 39. Please go ahead and read for us, please. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Matthew 23, starting from verse 1. Jesus criticizes the religious leaders. Then Jesus said to the crowds and to, the, and to his disciples, the teachers of religious law, and the Pharisees are the official interpreters of the law of Moses. So practice and obey whatever they tell you, but don't follow their example. For they don't practice what they teach. They crush people with unbearable religious demands and never lift a finger to ease the body. Everything they do is for show. On their arms, they wear extra wide prayer buses with scriptures, verses inside. And they wear robes with extra long tassels. And they love to sit at the head table at banquets and in the seat of honor in the synagogues. They love to receive respectful greetings as they walk in the marketplaces and to be called rabbi. Don't let anyone call you rabbi, for you have only one teacher, and all of you are equal as brothers and sisters. And don't address anyone here on earth as father, for only God in heaven is your spiritual father. And don't let anyone call you teacher, for you have only one teacher, the Messiah. The greatest among you must be a servant, but those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. Yeah. What sorrow awaits you teachers of religious law? And you Pharisees, hypocrites, for you shut the door of the kingdom of heaven in the people's faces. You won't go in yourself and you don't let others enter either. What sorrow awaits you, teachers of religious law? And you Pharisees, hypocrites, for you cross 
land, and sea to make one convert. And then you turn that person into twice the child of hell. You yourself are. Blind guys, what sorrow awaits you? For you say that it means nothing to swear by God's temple, but that it is binding to swear by the gods in the temple. Blind fools, which is more important, the gold on the temple that makes the gold sacred? And you say that to swear by the altar is not binding, but to swear by the gifts on the altar is binding. Have blind, for which is more important, the gift on the altar or the altar that makes the gift sacred? When you swear by the altar, you are swearing by it and by everything on it. And when you swear by the temple, you are swearing by it and by God who lives in it. And when you swear by heaven, you are swearing by the throne of God and by God who sits on the throne. What sorrow awaits you, teachers of religious law, and you Pharisees? Hypocrites, for you are careful to tithe even the tiniest icon from your head guidance, but you ignore the more important aspects of the law justice, mercy, and faith. You should tithe, yes, but do not neglect the more important things. Blind guys. You strain your water so you won't accidentally swallow a night, but you swallow a camel. What sorrow awaits you, teachers of religious law, and you Pharisees, hypocrites, for you are so careful to clean the outside of the cup and the dish, but inside you are filthy, full of greed and self indulgences you blind Pharisees, first wash the inside of the cup and the dish, and then the outside will become clean too. Verse 27. What sorrow awaits you, teachers of religious law? And you Pharisees, hypocrites, for you are like whitewashed tombs, beautiful on the outside, but filled on the inside with dead people's bones and all sorts of impurity. Actually, you look like religious people, but inwardly, your hearts are filled with hypocrisy and lawlessness. What sorrow awaits you, teachers of religious law? And you Pharisees, hypocrites, for you build tombs for the prophets your ancestors killed. And you decorate the monuments of the godly people your ancestors destroyed. Then you say, if we had lived in the days of our ancestors, we would never have joined them in killing the prophets. But in saying that, you testify against yourselves that you are indeed the descendants of those who murdered the prophets. Hmm. Go ahead and finish what your ancestors Started. Snakes, sons of vipers, how will you escape the judgment of hell? Therefore, I am sending you prophets and wise men and teachers of religious law. But you will kill some by crucifixion, and you will flog others with whips in your synagogues. Chasing them from city to city, as a result, you will be held responsible for the murder of all godly people of all time. From the murder of righteous Abel to the murder of Zechariah, son of Berechiah, whom you killed in the temple between the sanctuary and the altar. I tell you the truth, this judgment will fall on this very generation. 
Verse 37. Jesus grieves over Jerusalem. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones God's messengers. How often I have wanted to gather your children together as a hen protests her chicks beneath her wings. But you wouldn't let me. And now, look, your house is abandoned and desolate. For I tell you this, you will never see me again until you say, Blessings on the one who comes in the name of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thank you to God. Brothers and sisters, it took me a long time to finish writing this week right up. I was up on time at 1.30 to 2 o'clock this morning. Because uh, sometimes this writing can be very challenging and it can be very difficult also to, to actually, the more I read this passage, I read it more, I say, wow, my God, Jesus, if Jesus and I was here today, he would probably condemn all of us. Because uh, we love religion. We want to show one church, one leg in the church, one leg outside. We behave like Christians on Sunday. We want to show people we are religious. But truly, when we go to work on Monday, we are not different from people who don't go to church. Some people laugh at you in the church with one of their mouth, but when they see you outside, they don't know you. And they are very religious. They want to tell you about religion in everything. They talk about it in their politics, in their everyday life. But the true fact is, they are far away from God. Because they have no love. They have no respect for foreigners. They look at foreigners like animals. So our topic today, Jesus teaches focus on genuine faith rather than outward appearance. Jesus Christ teaches focus on genuine faith rather than outward appearance. So it's very, very important that we understand this fact. We are children of God. We have to make sure we are actually doing what we are expected to do. Our goals in presenting this chapter by chapter every week is for you to see the need to seek God's will and live for Him in this corrupt world. Be a change agent. Not just hearing why feeling to live for Christ. We want your life to be relevant for God. Remember this word is not our home. We stand before God one day to give account of our lives in this present world. Remember that. Matthew chapter 23 is, is a sermon by Jesus Christ where he critiques the Pharisees and scribes for their hypocrisy and neglect of true spirituality. He denounces their legalism, focusing on outward appearance rather than inner righteousness. Number two, self-righteousness. Presenting yourself as religious or as righteous while condemning others. Neglect of justice, mercy, and faithfulness. Prioritizing minor rules over moral issues. Implication for modern day Christian. Authenticity. Focus on genuine faith rather than outward appearance. Number two, humility. Recognize your own flaws and avoid judging others. Balance. Prioritize love, compassion, and justice alongside religious practices. Four, spiritual substance over form. Emphasize inner transformation over mere ritual. I repeat that. Spiritual substance over form. Emphasize inner transformation over mere rituals. Compassion over condemnation. Show kindness and understanding towards others rather than condemnation. Number six, true leadership. Lead with humility. 
and servanthood rather than seeking power or recognition. Jesus' message remains relevant today, urging Christians to examine their hearts, motives, and action, and to strive for a genuine, loving, and just relationship with God and others. Furthermore, here is a breakdown of Matthew chapter 23, verse by verse, notification for modern day Christians. Verses 1 to 4. Jesus warned against following the Pharisees' example. As they preach, they don't practice what they preach. They body others with rules which they themselves do not follow or observe. Implication for modern day Christians be careful who you follow and learn from. Ensure your leaders practice what they preach. Verses 5 to 7. The Pharisees do good deeds for sure, seeking human praise. They want to appear righteous and important. Implication for modern day Christians Motives matter. Do good deeds for God's glory, not human recognition. Verses 8 to 12. Jesus teaches that true greatness comes from humility and servanthood, not title or positions. Implication for modern day Christian Embrace humility and serve order. Leadership should be about empowering, not elevating oneself. Verses 3 to verses 13 to 15. Jesus condemned the Pharisees for shutting the door to heaven. Preventing people from entering the kingdom. Think about what's going on today in this country, in America, or the country wherever you are. Implication for modern day Christians be careful not to create barriers to faith. Share the gospel, share the gospel, and welcome others to God's kingdom. Verses 16 to 22. The Pharisees prioritized minor rules over major moral issues like justice, mercy, and faithfulness. Implication for modern day Christian focus on weightier matter of God's law, love, compassion, and justice. Verses 23 to 24. Jesus criticized the Pharisees for straining at a gnat but swallowing the camel, prioritizing minor rules over major moral issues. You know, when I read that place, I was actually laughing. I said, Jesus used a very funny example. You know, those little, you guys don't understand it in the Western world. You know, when we are very, we very young, we have a, a container where we put water. And those water will have little tiny worm. And in order for us to swallow those worm, we, we try to strain the water. So that we drink only the water and throw away the little ant. We are not really worm, they, they were little ant. We throw them away. But Jesus said they strain the cup not to drink those little ants, but they, they swallow camel. I said, My God, Jesus Christ was telling them, You are prioritizing things that are not important, but you are leaving the important thing. Implication for modern day Christian don't major on minors. Prioritize God's big picture love, grace, and redemption. Verses 25 to 26. The Pharisees clean the outside of the cup, but neglect the inside, representing their inward corruption. Though they even want to show up with their big clothes, their big car, their big hijab. In Nigeria, they call it Ikele. They wear this big hijab, and some people, some women, they have party to part their, the, their, their front of their, their chest and the back of their back, and they look so gorgeous. But they want to show off. But when you look at these people, they are so evil. They don't respect their husband at all. They don't train their children. They don't show love. They don't even pray, they don't read their Bible. But they want to show they are very religious on Sunday. When they go to give offering, they, they move up and down. They are walking so slowly. They hold this one in their hand. They are freaking if I go to, oh, if they want to give donation, they are the first person to come on. And they want to give testimony. They actually want people to see their body. They are not there to actually worship God. That's what Christ was condemning here. See the inward corruption. 
implication from modern day Christian, clean your heart and motive, not just your outward appearance. Verse 20 to 28. The Pharisees appear righteous outwardly, but are full of hypocrisy and lawlessness within. Implication for modern day Christian, authenticity matters. Ensure your inner life align with your outward action. You know, authenticity and integrity is really the right thing when nobody is, when nobody is watching you. Are you the person that likes to steal? Are you the person that likes to cheat? Are you the person that just likes to show up? You are have one leg in the church, and the church over oh, says, Oh, you are a good brother and sister. But when you are also in the world, you go to this club, you are the one that will recognize. You are in both sides. You are not a Christian, you are not a believer. You fit in wherever you go to. That's what Christ is saying here. He says, examine your life. Implication for modern day Christian. Jesus, verses 20, 29 to 32. Jesus condemned the Pharisees for honorary prophets. For honorary prophets too, but rejecting their message. Jesus Christ condemned the Pharisees, verses 29 to 32. Jesus condemned the Pharisees for honorary prophet tombs, but rejecting their message. In the case of modern day Christian, honor God's messenger and their messages. Don't just be least service to faith. You know, least service is, oh, I'm a Christian. I don't want to get in, I don't want to involve in God's business. By investing my time, investing my money, investing my talent. I just go to church on Sunday, I just show up with my big car, my big clothes, I dress my children very well, my husband and wife will show nice people, we put on a nice picture, we are, we are laughing, we are, we are smiling. We want people to see that we are successful. But truly, we don't know God. Our heart is far away from God. That's what Christ was saying here. You know, Men and women are suffering for God today all over the whole world. What are we doing to lift their body, to share their body with them? To say, God, I know these men and women are women and men of God. How can I help them? I talk to a lot of pastors all the time and priests. My wife is from a Catholic background. And yeah. when we want to get married, the, the priest was telling us, usually we don't allow Catholic, no Catholic to marry a non-Catholic. He said, because I know you're a pastor, we we'll give this exemption. They have to get permission from their bishop to say this man is a man of God. We know how much he has contributed to do God's work through his conviction to different projects for God's work. I like to be very private. When people say, you do this for me, you are going to make me very uncomfortable. I like to do something because Jesus Christ said, whatever your right hand be, your left hand should not know. Whatever we do, we should do it quietly for God's glory. They said, God has says in the secret will reward you openly. So when you begin to say, oh, pastor, I want to thank I say, eh, eh, don't thank me. Just thank God. Because it is God that puts it in my heart to want to help somebody. It's not that I have so much money. My wife and I, we don't have so much money. But we love, we love to show the men of God. We love to respect them. We want to help them. We always, we're always talking about this money, what we're doing there. We went outside the wall, we were doing this. Like, my wife was telling me, you know, when the missionary came, they were not our brother, they were not our sister, they were not even the skin of our color. They established schools, they have, they have clinics, they show love to us. And we go to a clinic, we don't pay money. And we have antenatal and maternity homes where they give back to our, our, our mothers and to our children. But we never pay nothing or little or nothing. But today, we have baby churches, people are buying private jets. They establish this school, people cannot be able to pay for it. We say, who is this baby who? And these people talk so big when they are preaching. Somebody sent me this morning, he said, if you want to be rich, just pray to God. Once you pray, God will just answer everything. No, God is not a magic one. Prayer is good. But then other people just say, if you don't have any, just pray. No, you still have to walk. God expects us to work very hard for whatever we are going to get. I'm a very hard working person, whatever I'm doing. I said late till very early this morning. I was reading and rewriting, reading and rewriting. I said, read this, pa I said, read this passage. Because what Jesus was teaching is very challenging. It was a sermon he was giving. 
Jesus warned the Pharisees, verses 33 to 36. Jesus warned the Pharisees that they will be held accountable for their actions and rejection of God's messengers. Implication for modern day Christians take responsibility for your action and respond to God's messengers by accepting their words with total surrendering. Don't you say, We are here. Am I at least an hour with the Lord? Pastor Masha is my pastor. Are you living to are you living for God? What are you doing for God? Tell me, what do you do for God? Who what, what do you do for God? Eh? Tell me. I'm asking you, you're looking at me. Is it you I'm asking? <laughs> Tell me, is you I'm asking? God knows. So what are you doing for God? I know you cannot see me. So don't worry. I, I, I have to do I this one. I see you. I have, I, have, I, have, I have my brother from England who wants to put on the video. He wants to see my face. I said, I don't want you to see my face. <laughs> I don't want you to know who I am. <laughs> because I know you know me very well. It's my like my junior brother. I know him for many years. <laughs> so, but he wants to see my face. He's part of my mother. still there. I'm here. I'm living very much alive. <laughs> so but he wants to see my face. But I said, well, we can put on the video. No, I don't want you to see my face. If because you saw my video, that's the that I don't see any of you. So don't write to me and say, oh, because you saw my belly, you saw my car, uh, 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 don't even go there. I don't see you. So God sees you. <laughs> you guys must enjoy me. What are you doing for God? What is it that you are doing for God? You can pray. You can give your money. You can even give a word of encouragement. You can write to a pastor and say, Pastor, I'm praying for you. I appreciate your work. I know it's not easy to be a pastor, but I am praying for you that God will bless you. God will bless your children. God will enable you. God will provide you resources you need to do whatever you are doing. That is very encouraging. We don't just sit there, as we used to say in the midst of God's church, we are warming the bench. We are just warming the table. We are warming the chair. We are not doing nothing for God. Jesus Christ was very condemning the Pharisees. So the implication for modern day Christian, verses 39, but says that also, Jesus lament over Jerusalem, desiring to gather them under his wings like a hen, but they refuse. Implication for modern day Christian, God longs to gather and protect his people, respond with his love and grace by departing from sins and worldliness. Authenticity, humility, Servant leadership, prioritizing love, justice, and mercy, inner transformation, respond to God's message, embracing God's love and grace. In this chapter, Jesus addresses the crowds and his disciples. You know, I was talking to two people, two sets of people here, the crowd and his disciples. The living is carrying rebuke of the scribes and Pharisees. He highlighted hypocrisy, pride, and superficial religiosity. Of these religious leaders, their in-depth analysis, the, the in-depth analysis below include implication for modern day Christians relating to our contemporary world and heaven. Matthew chapter 23, 1 to 4 analysis. Jesus acknowledged the authority of the scribes and Pharisees as the interpreter of the law, sit in Moses' seat, but he criticized their hypocrisy, they body others with strict rules, but don't follow them themselves. They like to set a big rule for you, but they cannot lead all their figure to carry the same body. Implication for modern day Christian, authenticity leadership. Leaders should practice what they preach. Modern day Christians should be wary of hypocrisy and ensure their action align with their teachings. Including yourself, we are all pastors, we are all teachers, we are all workers of the gospel. Does your life align with God's word? When you go to your party, if you go to a party, I'm not a party person, if you go, the people say, whenever this man comes, he's always talking about God, he's always saying, let us pray. Of course, they will not like you if you do that one. But you want to hide and we go with the crowd to just be like them. But when you also go to a church, you also want to hide and be like the church people. 
You can't do that, brothers and sisters. You have to differentiate yourself. Either you are for God or you are for the world. You cannot serve two masters. Compassionate guy. Rather than imposing heavy body on others, Christians should help others carry their body. Galatians chapter 6 verse 2. It says, bear one another's body, so fulfill the law of Christ. Matthew chapter 23 verse 6, 5 to 7 analysis. Jesus condemned the scribes and Pharisees for their desire for public recognition and status. Oh, man of God, woman of God. People are very happy for that title. Implication for modern day Christian. Humility. Christians should avoid seeking praise and status. True service is humble and not for show. Matthew chapter 6 verse 1. So whatever you do, do it secretly. Your father will see it in secret with the word you open it. Simplicity, simplicity in worship, a sound display of piety, should not replace genuine devotion to God. So that people are not to show up with a big cross on their, on their neck and oh, they, they wear a Christian symbol and everything. But when you watch them, this is for our crooks. We are having an election in America right now. Some poli for political party think they are God's party. And this political party, they are so corrupt, they are so evil, they are so demonic, they are so rebellious, but they preach that they are the carriers of God's message. But when you watch them, their heart is far away from God. Jesus Christ actually condemned them. That what he was saying here, what you guys say saying here. Matthew chapter 23, verses 8 to 12. Analysis. Jesus emphasized equality among his followers and the importance of humility and service. Implication for modern religion, egalitarian relationship. Christians should treat each other as equals, brothers and sisters, without, without heretical titles that elevate that elevate one above another. Servant leadership. True greatness in the kingdom of heaven is measured by service to others. You know you can do your service by the way you, you can give your money, you can give whatever you can. You know everybody wants to say Mother Teresa, Mother Teresa, I meet a lot of these pastors. Oh, I meet a lot of these politicians. Mother Teresa, I met Mother Teresa, I met Mother Teresa. Why don't you be like Mother Teresa yourself? Jesus Christ is calling everyone of us today. This passage, Jesus Christ was very emphatic and he actually used vulgar and dirty language to condemn the Pharisees. If I use such language, I go, Oh, Pastor, we thought you are a Christian. He said, What to you? He said, Cost me to you. I condemn you for your bad behavior. Jesus Christ was not using darling, darling word. He didn't tell him, if you don't believe in me, you're going to be rich. Just pray to me, you're going to buy a private car, a private jet. Just test the number to heaven, you're going to get a lot, you're going to be rich. Jesus was focusing on the inner purity. Verses 23 to, verses 13 to 15. Analysis, Jesus precise the religious leader for hindering others from entering the kingdom of heaven and for their misguided evangelism. You know, today, a lot of people, you know, Brother Bra King from England sent me a video of the Zacharias Apoki. I shared the video with so many of you. The Zacharias Apoki was saying, when they were young, they went to school for free. They had everything for free. He said, but today, those of them that got those things for free were not the ones ruling Nigeria and were the ones calling Nigeria. He said, what irony. And they are all Christians, they are all Muslim. But they are far away from God. What a terrible life is that? Does your life reflect who you are truly? But you claim to be a Christian. In your business, are you a Christian? So today, the world is very dangerous. We are very careful because one day, we are going to leave this world. You know, there was a billionaire who was so rich that he became foolish in this modern America. You know, pressure is very powerful. And if you go inside the water, the deeper you go in the water, the more pressure 
Because water is very powerful. It can actually crush a very heavy machine. So French men built submarine with fiberglass and they want to go to the bottom of the sea. They were so rich that they don't understand simple physics. While they went there, this high pressure of the ocean crushed their fiberglass so-called submarine and their body was torn to pieces. They couldn't even find their body. Very tiny little bit because the pressure is very powerful. That's why they say when you are driving, you see floor, don't try to drive through because small little floor can take a big, mighty trailer or truck, as we call it in America. And my son was telling me say that another person wants to do it again. I said, sometimes people get money, it's not because they are wise, but because making money is not, it's not, it's not, it's not being it's not being wise, it's not being religious. So those who are priests and I'm rich, they have nothing to do with religion. So this, they were telling me that other people are trying to try. I said, there are food, there are so many things to do. There are people who are hungry in the whole world. If it's a Christian, give money to evangelism. I don't believe in building my Christian church. Because the, the missionary, when they came, Jesus had never had a church. There is no church that called Jesus Church. He was preaching from church to church, from village to village, from synagogue to synagogue, from street to street. The kingdom of God is here. Repent, 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 repent. That's what Jesus focused on. I said, but there are so many things to do. People are hungry. Those are not no fault of their own. What is this? Why don't they spend this money? There are so many areas you can do farming where people are hungry and, and take the food to them. Nigeria is an example. We have a big, massive, good land where we can do farming. We can do so much thing. People are hungry because everybody wants to be rich. I'm going to the church are poking. But what are we doing with the money? The cost of living is so high because you know, you know, in economics, economics 101, in those things in the university, those of us in, who want to invest in, it said, economics 101 said, when plenty of money is chasing fewer goods, that will lead to inflation. That's economy 101. As you go into more advanced economy or very school economy, you become, you become more intricacy, become more in detailed analysis about production, about marketing, about management, about everything. But unfortunately, we don't understand that single concept. If you have money, so many things to do. But the people are so lazy also, they don't want to do nothing. So Jesus Christ was talking here about how we have turned religion to something else. Especially in Nigeria and America. That's why we don't want to go to church. Well, I don't believe the people actually go to church that much because it's not the church that saves somebody. But it's good to go to church. But is your heart in God? Implication of modern day Christian, in post inclusive evangelism, Christians should lead others to Christ without creating barriers. The gospel should be accessible to all. True conversion, evangelism should lead to genuine transformation, not just actual conformity to religious norms, which we call Sunday, Sunday Christian while living like the devil the rest of the week. You see, after the appearance, and on Sunday you dress, put on your, you call it Sunday best clothes. Once the Sunday day is over, or before the Sunday is over, so you can actually smoke within the church. But in America here, you don't look at smoking as sin. You don't look at taking alcohol as sin. Then you look at having sex with church members as sin. And I say, ha! Huh? Something is not right. Most of the churches you go to, they are all full of single women with children. Where is their husbands? That is question asked. But you don't condemn them. God does not look at them. I told her, once you are born again, you are born again. I say, please, count me out. I'm not part of that. May God help us in Jesus' name. Matthew chapter 23, 16 to 22. Analysis. Jesus condemned the Pharisees for their convoluted and deceptive oath, highlighting their misplaced values and lack of understanding of what is truly sacred. 
Implication for modern Christian. Integrity in speech. Christians should be honest and straightforward in their words. Letting their yes be yes and their no be no. Matthew chapter 5 verse 37. True worship. The focus should be on God. What he did secret. Not on material possession or external external rituals. True worship should not be on possession or external ritual. You know what people want to show today? How much money they have. When people come to a church, their heart is not really the gospel. Most of the church is not even preach the gospel today. It's so sad that we are focusing on material things. Who have the most money? According to the church and folk, you say, once you're able to give a little bit of money, they make you an assistant pastor or they make you a deacon. Because of the money you have. These people don't know God. Some people are not going to church because they want to worship it. Some people are going there because of money. They just want to show up. Because it was in Jesus' name. I was a pastor in the church. I want to visit this member. He said, Pastor, I'm not a Christian, I'm a Muslim. I only just come to the church in case I'm doing party. So I come to the to party. I said, I like to go and visit everybody at home. I was shocked. I said, hey, look, and I said, if I'm coming to a church, I'm teaching this word. I'm, I'm pouring my heart to teach the word of God. This man is not, it's not even into what I'm saying. He said, I'm not a Christian, Pastor, I'm a Muslim. Yeah. He is not telling me in my back, he's telling me face to face. He's respecting me a lot. He's very kind. Pastor, when you see him, Pastor, if I see him in the store right now, he wants to, want to buy something, say, Pastor, no one will pay for you. Those are words. It's not going to save you. You will not take it to heaven. Have you accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Have you turned to Christ 100%? You cannot put one leg in the church, one leg outside the church. It's not going to work. This world is not our home. Jesus rebuked the Pharisees for their meticulous piety. Why? Verse 23 24. Why neglecting the weightier matter of the law, such as justice, mercy, and faithfulness? How do you treat poor people in your life? That's how to know if you are truly a Christian. Oh, I'm very rich. Maybe these poor people are working for you. You are so harsh when you think you are the boss. You are so demanding. You are so demeaning them. You are so you are so disrespectful them. You know, I look at people when they think they have a spiritual position. They think they are gods. But not to me. You can never tolerate nonsense. Wherever I walk, not me. Oh, I'm a fire brand person. You say one word I don't like, I fire back to you and say, Oh, don't even let me go there. Like Jesus Christ, like Elijah. If I don't qualify, I will not have this job. I am qualified, whether private or anywhere. So for that reason, don't mess with me. As a child of God, are you messing with another person because you think you have power over them? Remember, you have master over you. This world does not belong to you. One day. Holy remember. Holy remember by what we have done. Toss who part from the world and is holy. Holy remember by what we have done. We shall be remembered, we shall be remembered by what we have done. Toss who will part from the world and is toiling. Holy remember by what we have done. What are you doing for Christ? What are you to remember for? Brothers and sisters, may God help us in Jesus' name. Verses 23 or 24. Yeah. Implication for modern day Christian. Balanced devotion. Christians should not focus on minor religious prizes while neglecting major ethical and moral responsibility. Holistic righteousness. True righteousness involves both religious observance and ethical behavior. You know, ethical is living right when nobody is watching you. What do you do when nobody is watching you? 
If that's where your Christianity is tested, are you honest man? Do you change number? Yes, I've been in California and they tried five men. During COVID, when people were hungry, they stole billions of dollars in feeding the public. And these people are now being sentenced to jail. Who is deceiving who? They say they are rich. They are business people, but they are thieves. Who is deceiving who? May God help us in Jesus' name. Matthew chapter 23, verses 25 to 26. And now is Jesus condemned the Pharisees for their focus on external piety. Implication of modern Christian, inner transformation. Christians should seek internal, internal purity and transformation through the Holy Spirit, which will naturally result in outward righteousness. When the Holy Spirit fills your heart, your Holy Spirit will transform your inner world and outward to everything and become holy, called genuine holiness. Holy is not about external appearances, but what is that about a heart that seeks God? Matthew 23 to 27. And then it's just not compare the Pharisees to whitewashed tombs, beautiful on the outside, but corrupt inside, and facilitating their hypocrisy. Implication for modern day Christian. Authentic faith. Christians should avoid superficial religiosity and strive for authentic faith that transforms from inside out. Self examination. Regular self examination and repentance are crucial for maintaining spiritual integrity. Are you honest? Are you pure? Are you holy? That was you are going to be judged by. May God help us in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Verses 29 to 32. And that is it. Jesus pointed out that the Pharisees progressed in honoring the prophet while embodying the same spirit of rebellion and murder as their ancestors. Implication of modern Christian. Consistency in faith. Christians should honor past sins by living faithfully, not just by venerating their memory. You know, we like to praise Mother Teresa, Prophet Susu Persin, our Bishop Ida Rosa, Susu Persin. Are we living like them? Are we actually living? We, we like to praise them, but our heart is far away. Because it was in Jesus' name. Avoiding hypocrisy. Acknowledge and repent from any behavior that, contra that contradicts the value and teaching of Christ. Matthew chapter 23, 33 to 36, and that is it. Jesus condemned the Pharisees for their violent opposition to gospel message, predicting judgment upon them for their action. Implication for modern day Christians. Respect for God's messenger. Christians should respect and heed those who speak God's truth, avoiding his hostility towards them. Accountability. Recognize that action have consequences and God will hold individual and community accountable for their mistreatment of his messengers. You know as Christian, when you see somebody do a bad thing, we should never tell them God bless you. We should try to avoid it. The God helps in Jesus' name. Matthew chapter 37 to 30, Matthew chapter 23, verse 37 to 39. Analysis. Jesus lament over Jerusalem expressing his desire to protect and gather the people where they were unwilling. He predicts their desolation and speaks of his eventual return. Implication for modern religion. God compassion recognizes God's, God, God's compassion. Recognize God's desire to gather and protect his people. Christians should respond to his call with their willingness and obedience. Hope in God's return. Hope in Christ's return. Be mindful of the promise of Christ's return and live in a way that anticipates and prepares for that day. In summary, Matthew 23 provides a powerful critique of hypocrisy, superficial religiosity, misplaced value among religious leaders. For modern day Christians, the chapter serves as a reminder to seek authentic faith. Practice humility, prioritize justice, mercy, and faithfulness. 
live with integrity, both inwardly and outwardly. May these verses guide modern day Christians towards a more genuine, loving, and just relationship with Christ, with God, and others. This chapter teaches emphasize the importance of genuine devotion to God, servant leadership, and the hope of Jesus' return. Encourage believers to align their lives with the value of the kingdom of heaven. Invitation to accept Christ. I want to extend an invitation to you, one that has transformed complex lives. An invitation to embrace Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Jesus offers us love, forgiveness, and purpose beyond measure. He stands at the door of your heart, ready to enter your life and bring you peace, hope, and eternal life. Will you consider taking this step to let Jesus Christ be your Lord and Savior? It's a chance to experience freedom, free from the burden of sin, find solace in His love, and embark on the journey of profound spiritual fulfillment that offer eternal life and opportunity to live with Christ forever. If this resonates with you, or if you have any question, I'm here to talk and support you in any way I can. Your spiritual journey is unique and respected. Wherever you may be along the way, Jesus Christ's res resurrection is the key to eternal life. Open your heart in this amazing period to let Christ's power change your life forever. With much love and God bless you. May God help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Brothers and sisters, do you want to give life to Christ? That is the greatest blessing we can have in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. One of our songs this morning is Rock of Ages. Rock of Ages, glad for me. Be of sin, the dark. 
society survive past our time? Yes. Are we actually serving the Lord? Every time I see that, I see the state of the world and Christianity, my heart is troubled. I say, after all, what is going to happen? The children are going to come after us. What are they doing right now? I pray every day, I say, God, may Christianity not die in our time. We are living in a very dangerous time right now. The church is not practicing the true gospel. People don't read the Bible. It is very, very sad. Without the Bible, we don't know, understand the mind of God. That's why we decided to be doing an hour with the Lord, verse by verse, line by line, chapter by chapter, to understand the mind of God. The question I want to ask all of us Have you given your life to Christ? Are you actually living for God? Does your life reflect what you profess? It's very easy to say I'm a Christian. Some people will boldly tell you, I'm not a Christian. I only just go to church. Going to church does not make you a Christian. It's your daily living that makes you a Christian. Jesus said, take your cross and follow me. Are you taking Jesus Christ's cross? If you are not carrying the cross, are you, are, you, are you encouraging others that carry the cross? Are you giving them the, the courage to carry the cross? This is the chance and the, the, the world we are living today. It's very dicey. I ask God to help us so that we will not be found wanting. To be very sad on that day, God will say, Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I don't know you. You say, What? Jesus, you don't know me. I'm the, I'm the one that was in with the Lord. Mama Rachel said, Mama Rachel said, uh, when I get to heaven, I'm going to tell Jesus about it. I said, Mama, don't worry. Jesus Christ was the one that brought me here. He said, I'll tell Jesus about you. He said, I'll tell Jesus about it. Don't worry. Jesus sent me here. After the man, after the woman dead, the Bible, the, 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 the nursing home ministry was more encouraging. We were like, God sent me for her. And after that, after a few more months, we stopped going. And we have to look for that way to serve the Lord. May God help us in Jesus' name. Do we have any prayer requests? I'm going to ask Bishop to pray for us today because as I read this passage, it's very challenging. Jesus was very emphatic. He was using very well that we consider to be very violent. He said, Woe to you, cost to you, you hypocrite, you hypocrite, you hypocrite. Jesus Christ saw their heart. Jesus Christ was not just saying because he didn't have something to say. He was looking at their heart. Jesus Christ is looking at your heart now, he's looking at my heart. Are you a hypocrite? Don't quote me and say, I say you are a hypocrite. Don't go home and say, ah, Pastor Matthew said I'm a hypocrite. Don't, don't even go there. Don't, don't look at me like that. I know you are looking at me and I say, look at this man. What is he saying? Don't look at me. Look at your Bible. If you have no place to look at. So, we cry for the Jesus day. <laughs> So today that God will give for every one of us the grace to actually be faithful and be what he wants us to be in him. Amen. Because hypocrisy is a very serious thing. Because that is the biggest way to be an obstacle in evangelism. Because our life, I remember when I was young, my, my chaplain in my university, Father Chikupe used to tell us that. He said, listen, you are in the campus. Your life is the biggest Bible that the world can preach. Because the, the community believe we don't quote the Bible. He said, but before you look for Bible, you read, look for somebody to start saying, John, uh, six, uh, John six, 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 this, uh, chapter 3 says that one. He said, somebody has read your life 1,001 times, 1,001 verses of your life. And that will determine whether that person will follow you to this Christ, this Jesus we are preaching in this in this campus. He says, so you go and be the quickest Bible that the world can read. What are we preaching with our lives? That God will actually give us the grace. It takes the grace of God to be a faithful child of God. Of course. The grace of God. That's what we have to pray for ourselves. Pray for our children. Pray for our siblings. Ask God for our generation. When God grants us that faith, like Divine Grace family is building uh, uh, one family at a time. Taking the word of God to the ends of the nation as the water covered the sea. Uh, many people may not have even known that we are Christian. 
they know that they just what is special about this Pastor Marshall's family, this uh, family? Well, okay, they are they are pastor, okay. Would that be said of us at all times? But at times we fail. That we have to ask for God's grace. That we're in that critical situation to be an eyesore to the faith we profess, that God will give us the grace to prevail. Give our children the grace to prevail. The world is challenging. Yes, give them the grace to stand out that they will, they will be light shining in darkness. Darkness will not comprehend us. Say, but, but rather, no, all men are my disciples. Yeah, but rather, we will, we, will, we will shine and our light will lighten the world and bring more souls to Christ. May God help us in Jesus' name. Star yes. Starfina also will thank God for her for her son that has just graduated from high school. Mm -hmm. I mean from mm -hmm. elementary school. Middle school. Yeah, middle school going to high school. They went for the graduation that God will continue to be with them and grant them his chosen high school for the boy. Where he will go and he will sell body and soul and spirit. It's a, it's a better uh, son, son graduated too from high school, from high school and yeah. going to university that as he goes, God will be with him. So many of our children here have graduated from one class, one level to the other. That God will be with them. I think, the, I think Brother Valentine said son. His son also graduated. graduating. I know Sister, sister, uh, sister Carol was telling me about it. Okay. But I'm so busy this day. Let Bishop pray for us that we should practice what we preach that what we know we are Christians yes sir oh why not sir why not? take the time Lord Jesus keep me true Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. 
Oh, we bring bishop before you and the family. Your word say they are labor in the vineyard that are the messengers of Christ. We need to honor them. Father, give us the grace to honor them as they are labor in your vineyard for this many years. That their labor will not be with sorrow and will not be with regret. In the name of Jesus Christ, we live in a world where the men of God are not honor the true men of God. Father, give him the grace and give us the grace to also recognize them and to honor them as they daily labor in your vineyard for their humility and for their devotion to the cause of Christ in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, those are children that have graduated, we bring all of them before you, God of Israel. Their future is in your hand. Give them the heart to truly love you, first of all. Because there is no man that truly serves God that God will not reward. I was young and an old man. The Lord had never forsaken those who truly serve Him. But I give our children the grace to truly love you. Not looking at the present circumstances, but rather to focus on you. Know that if they truly serve you, there's great reward. I can testify. I can say it with boldness, without shame or timidity, that serving God, great reward. Here and hereafter. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Father, we live in America and we live in different parts of the world and we live in Nigeria, other parts of the world where there is conflict, there is struggle, there is so many violence. Father, deliver us from the evil ones and from the hand of those that hate us. We live in a world right now where the gospel is minimized, the word of God is trivialized. Sin is the order of the day and it's as they say in my language, a fairy tale. Before I read a fairy tale, now people are talking with riches. Even though they got this money in a dirty way, Father, give us the grace to truly be a true child. Knowing that this world is not our home. One day the thing will pursue, they are only eternal. They are temporary, but we will leave them behind. But what is eternal is knowing Christ. Father, give us the grace to know Christ more, to serve Him more. To walk in your vineyard, to put our resources to expand the kingdom of God, our prayers, our money, our talent, our encouragement to the men of God. Even just a single letter, a single comfort, a single text message, Pastor, thank you, Bishop, thank you. That's encouraging. There is no man that walks without a reward. Companies do give a bonuses and they do give a reward, but God is our rewarder. Yeah, Father, we bring all these people represented here before you, Lord. Whatever is our need, all of them are before you. Yes. You know all of them. Yes. Father, I meet every one of our needs according to your riches in glory. Our children are before you, yes, Lord. wherever they are. Deliver them from the erroneous belief yes, yes. and from its conception of what the gospel represents and give them the heart to truly love you. Yes. Knowing that a man or woman that serves you will rule this earth. Yes. That's what the Bible says. Yes. Say, righteous shall rule this earth yes. and their children yes. shall inherit it and they shall be more blessed than unbelievers. But I give our children the grace to do you. Yes. In Jesus' name. Amen. The Bible it says, it says, it's not he that run it. It is one that God has favored. But I give our children the grace to know that success comes from you. It's not the smartest case that achieves success in the end of the day. You want to God favored. For I favor our children and make them to know you and to love you and to serve every family represented here. They're before you. We are to bless every one of us. Every husband, every wife, every children. Every family, I know we are family unit. All the families that are here today, we have over 14 families represented here today, Lord. Bless every one of us. Even those who have traveled, Brian Kena, Dr. Fina, and other people who are not able to join us due to one pro program or the other. But I buy with all of them. And let your grace be rich towards us all. In Jesus' name. Amen. We live in a challenging time. Deliver us from the evil ones and from the hand of those that hate us. And those that will hear this word by way of social media, bless them equally. In yes. Jesus' name.
Amen. Brothers and sisters, may the Almighty God bless us. Hallelujah. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. May we find favor with God and with man. Amen. And do so we come in contact with. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Amen. We cannot do without you, Lord. Jesus, we cannot do without you. We cannot do without you. We cannot do without you. Sure.